Morning, Loretta. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Marge. Marge, I always love when you leave messages because you're like me. You always put exclamation points. It's so great. <laughs> People always joke because um, I'm always using exclamation points. Like if you read one of my bulletin columns, it's got an exclamation point after every sentence. And I never realized I even did that um, until someone brought it up to me a number of years ago. It was quite a while ago. And now I'm so aware of it. But I tend to write like I speak, okay? I'm just, I don't know, constantly fired up. I can never calm down, <laughs> which is a blessing and a curse all at the same time. Hi, Walt. Good to see you, bud. Hope everything's well out in Arizona. Miss you around here. Hopefully, eventually, you'll get your way back to Minnesota. God's will be done, though, buddy. Hi, Nat. So good for us to join together in the mornings just to pray. Uh, I'm excited about today, this morning. I've got just a little thing that I want to, it's kind of a teaching, uh, but a reflection. Uh, and I think it can be really pertinent uh, today for those that watch it. It can be incredibly helpful. So, <coughs> Hi, Jackie. I think you're out in Arizona, too. Hopefully you're doing well and eventually make your way back to Minnesota. Um, praying for you. We miss you around here. Uh, hopefully you're doing okay. Looks like another day of sunshine, which is good. Um, I think, I think, as of now, uh, my schedule's not too crazy today, which I'm really grateful for. Um, I was able to get some things done yesterday that have been kind of heavy on my heart and my mind, and hoping today the Lord takes it easy on me. You know, it's okay to pray that every once in a while. Like, Lord, will you just give me a calm day, you know? Um, that's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see how that all plays out. Tomorrow I'm going to take a good day off. I'm kind of looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, just uh, take another break and catch my breath a little bit tomorrow. Okay, uh, Lots to get ready for with the loosening up and a little bit of the opening of, of masses. Uh, we talked a little bit about that at night prayer last night. That There's a lot of little details that we have to figure out. It's going to be tricky on people. It's going to be a, We're just trying to make it as clear as we can for people and uh, keep people as safe as possible. But I'm excited about that. <laughs> I like it, Shirley. Is that a girl? <laughs> Must be something about people that use exclamation points, you know? Uh, it's great. It's good. I'm glad I've got another person that does that all the time. I, man, I think that started actually once I became a priest. It's really funny. Maybe not. Maybe I've done that all the time. I'm not sure. I definitely know as, I, as I've been a priest longer, I've actually got more fired up in my heart. <laughs> it's, it's funny to think about, but... I think, I've, I, I think the more I've been a priest, the more I've realized the seriousness of, um, I guess, salvation, people's souls. Uh, and it get, it's, it's increased my desire to proclaim the gospel and to really help people. Um, that's increased. It's definitely not decreased since I've been a priest. Um, so I think that, that's some of the exclamation points are just because I, ah, I want people to understand. And I think one of the hardest things sometimes, I think in life general, but I think as a priest too, is that, you want like conversion of heart in your people so bad. You want you want them to, to see the gift of God and, and to understand the gift of faith. But yet faith is a gift in many ways. So sometimes you have to let go of that, and, and it's so hard because I'm just like ah, I just want them to know. Um, and uh, but but you have to trust. You got to trust in the Lord and all those things. Uh, but I think sometimes exclamation points are just a way of saying like how bad you want it and how excited you are. Uh, so, anyways, that's a long conversation on exclamation points. I know uh, you grammar people out there would say, no, don't do it. Uh, but whenever I see someone using exclamation points all the time, I'm kind of endeared to them. Uh, I appreciate those uh, personalities and attitudes towards life. All right, so here's what I'm going to do real quick. Uh, this morning, you know, every morning, try to give a little bit of a reflection <coughs> and something we can think about. Uh, throughout the day. And so uh, what I want to do here is, uh, you know, this past Sunday, uh, there was that scripture passage in our in our mass that, that talked about how uh, a thief comes to steal, slaughter, destroy, but then Jesus says, but I've came to give you abundant life. And the sheep hear my voice and follow me. Okay. And, and it's really good because Jesus is laying out the fact that, that we, we actually make like cartoons about this. We actually make jokes about this, or you see it in movies where there's the one voice here, the little angel, and then there's the little devil here, okay? 
And you constantly have those voices in your ears. Okay? Uh, the, the voice of the angel and the voice of the devil. You all know that. Okay? And you don't have to be a Christian to know that. You don't have to be a disciple of Christ to know that. Like, all of us have that reality of um, these voices. Okay? Drawing us to the goodness and then a voice drawing us to the darkness. Okay? And it's, it's a very, very real thing in our human lives. And so the question is, like, how do we, how do we sift through that? How do we discern, all right, what is the voice of God and what is the voice of the evil one? All right, Jesus clearly talked about the devil, okay? Um, that's very clear. I trust Jesus. I believe Jesus. He's the Savior. He is God. And so there's definitely evil. I mean, that's just, uh, that's, a, that's a, a rational thought. That's a, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, when we really think about it. Sometimes the world wants to deny evil, uh, but, I mean, that's denying Christ. That's denying Jesus. There is a spiritual battle going on in our lives. So how do we hear the voice of God? All right? Um, Dan, my seminarian, or our seminarian, he sent off a little letter to me yesterday, or article to me yesterday, that was really good. It was just eight re eight ways to, rec to discern between the voice of the evil one and the voice of God. Okay? And it comes from some things that Pope Francis spoke about. All right? Pope Francis spoke... I basically listed out these eight things um, at one of, <coughs> one of his talks this past Sunday. Um, so I just want to go through these eight things really, really quick. They're short, 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 like three sentences on each one. So just hang tight. So again, this is just eight ways in which you can discern the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the evil one. Okay? And so the first one is, am I still free? Okay, now listen to this. The voice of God never forces us. God proposes himself. He does not impose himself. Instead, the evil voice seduces, assails, forces. It arouses dazzling illusions, emotions that are tempting but transient. So what, this first step how, between, like, recognize the voice of God and the evil one. God proposes something. He invites us to something, okay? There's this invitation. He doesn't impose himself on us. God's a gentleman, all right? Christ is a gentleman. He just, he just says, hey, here I am, all right? Come follow me. It's this gentle invitation to relationship, okay? That's important for us to understand. The evil one attacks, all right? He says, do it, do it. Come on, you can do it. Get after it. Like, and he pushes a little bit in some ways, all right? And it gives us these dazzling illusions. And it gives us emotions that are tempting. But then we sit back and we realize that, like, that won't satisfy us, okay? God invites us to this life-giving relationship. It's an invitation, and the evil one attacks us and says, you have to have this. You need to do this. And it's a real, like, attacking voice. It's very subtle, but you it's clear you can notice the difference between the two. Okay? And so God always proposes our freedom. The evil one takes away our freedom. Okay? Hopefully that's helpful. Help, uh, just to help you discern that. Number two. All right? Am I being flattered? Okay? At first it flatters. It makes us believe that we are all powerful but then it leaves us empty inside and it accuses us. You are worth nothing. The voice of God instead corrects us with great patience, but always encourages us, consoles us, and always nourishes hope. This is so good. Like, what happens is the evil one tempts us, and it seems so good. All right? It's like, wow, yes. And then as soon as we choose the evil voice and we choose sin, it, it, immediately after it happens, there's this emptiness. All right? And the evil one says, you idiot. You're worth nothing. Why did you do that? And there's this accusatory voice. He, he's so cunning. Like He gives us this idea that somehow that sin is going to be satisfying and it's going, to, it's, it's going to be good. And then as soon as we do it, it turns on us in a very ugly, ugly way. Um, and, and we have to be aware of that. Um, I know that I've seen that so many times in my own life. And I see that in so many lives, like in the confessional where people come like, I did this. It was so stupid, but it was so tempting. And then as soon as I did it, I felt like just dirt. I felt terrible. Like the evil one attacks and then he accuses you. Okay? What does God do? He cracks us with great patience. And he always encourages us. He consoles us. There's always hope. Okay? Again, this is so important. The evil one, when he when he when he's tempting us, he tempts us to something, and then when we do it, he attacks us and says we're no good. Alright? He beats us up and he, he just you, you loser, like, you're, you're, you're never going to get over this. You're, you're no good. He attacks. That's the voice of the evil one. The voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God. He says, yeah, all right, stop doing that. But it's with the patience. It's with the love. It's with an encouragement. God consoles us. I still love you, my son or daughter. I still love you, but 
but but I expect more out of you. So he calls us on, but it's always with hope that it's possible. Okay? Number three. All right. Am I looking forward? The voice of God is a voice that has a horizon, whereas the voice of evil leads you to a wall. It backs you into a corner. So again, the evil one, what he does is he pushes you in a corner where you feel stuck, you feel alone, you feel like you can't accomplish anything, like it, you're just done. All right? You're no good. You'll never overcome that. You might as well give up. Okay, That's the voice of the evil one. What's the voice of God? It always has a horizon. It always has something like, there's possibilities, there's hope, something can be overcome, there's there's joyful things beyond this, you know? And I think this is really good, especially during this time, because what the evil one wants us to do is get quit and just give up. He wants to say, like, you're done. It's all over. Then we get angry, we get bitter. But what does the Holy Spirit do? If we're attentive to the Holy Spirit, or attentive to God the Father, he calls us to new horizons. He helps us to see that there is something out there. There is a plan, that God's with us in all these things. Okay, so remember, all right, if it's the voice of God, it allows us to look forward with hope. If it's the voice of the evil one, we'll feel restrained, we'll feel like we're in a corner, we'll feel against a wall, okay? Very important that we can discern between those two voices. All right, number four. Am I in the present moment? All right, this is such an important one. Right? The voice of the enemy distracts us from the present and wants us to focus on fears of the future or sadness about the past. The enemy does not want the present. It brings to the surface the bitterness, the memories of the wrong suffered, of those who have hurt us, many bad memories. Instead, the voice of God speaks to us in the present. Now you can do good. Now you can exercise the creativity of love. Now you can renounce the regrets and remorse that hold your heart captive. It inspires us. It leads us ahead. But it speaks in the present now. Friends, this is so, so important. Right? The voice of God calls us into present action. It calls us into living the now. All right? God is in the now. He's in this present moment. Okay? What does the evil one do? He gets us fixated on the past. We get fixated on the things that have happened in the past. Our hurts, our wounds, our difficulties, our frustrations. All right? He gets us consumed in that. Or he gets us fixated on the future. And all we can think about is what's ahead in kind of a negative way. Um, it's, 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 a, it's an all-consuming sort of thing. It distracts us. Okay, So the evil one's goal is to take us away from the present moment and get us caught up in, in too ahead of us, ourselves or too behind ourselves. And you see that. We get caught up thinking the worst-case scenario in our mind. Okay? Or we think about all the hurts in our past. Or we think about how terrible things were in the past. And you see, when we get consumed in those two things, we lose sight that God is present right now. How does God reveal himself in the burning bush? He says, I am. Like, I am. I am now. Okay? So important. All right? So if today you're you're finding yourself fixated on the future, you know, and, and thinking worst case scenarios, or you're fixated on the past, some anger, some resentment, some bitterness. Remember, the evil one's voice often wants us to distract us from the now. And what does God's voice say? He says, you can do that now. You can do good right now. You can exercise your love now. You can renounce the regrets and remorse of the past now. All right? Like, now is the time. Now is the day. Okay? Please keep that in mind. All right? That's very important as we discern those two things. All right, we're getting there. Number five. All right, is it about my ego? Okay, again, these two voices, the voice of the evil one and the voice of the Holy Spirit, all right, they, they raise different questions in us, all right? Those, those questions that come from God, they'll be like this, what is good for me? Instead, the tempter, he'll insist another question, what do I feel like doing? What I feel like, the evil voice always revolves around the ego, its impulses, its needs, everything. It is like the tantrums of a child, everything and now. The voice of God ins instead never promises joy at a low price. It invites us to go beyond our ego, to find the true good and peace. I really like this one. All right. What 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 is Pope Francis telling us? Okay. The the voice of God says, What's good for me? Like it's, a, it's like what's good for the other? It's this idea where we're thinking about the good, but what does the tempter do? 
He, he puts in his voice, it, and what does it say? It says this. What do I feel like doing? Okay? The voice of the Holy Spirit doesn't say, what do I feel like doing? That's the voice of the world and the voice of the evil one. What do I feel like doing? If we live by what I feel like doing, we're in trouble. All right? The evil one wants to arouse our egos and our impulses, our, our like superficial needs. And he says, you need it now. Like now, now, now. All right? The evil one, is it, he's so good and he's so vicious. He wants to get our egos and our impulses just rolling. And then all we're doing is living for these impulses and living for our ego. And I need this, I need this. And you see what happens. We, we When we do that, we don't live like Christ. What does Christ do? He lays down his life for the other. He lays down his life for the sheep. That has nothing to do with his ego. He's willing to suffer for the other. Okay? He's really to do the good. Okay, so you hear these voices? You got, you got what I'm saying? The evil one says... Like, what do you feel like doing? All right? And it all gets about you. It's your ego and your impulse. What does the voice of God say? All right? He says, what's the good here? Do the good. Even if it doesn't feed your impulse and your ego. Choose the good. All right? Lay down your life. Love is not a feeling. All right? But the, but the evil one wants us to think that somehow... Like, our lives are just based on our ego and our impulses. When you live that way, it will destroy you. I see time and time again, my friends. All right? Don't live by the impulses and that evil voice. All right? Live by that voice of God that calls us to do the good and to hear the good every day. Three last ones. Number six. What aftertaste does it leave? Remember, evil never gives us peace. It causes frenzy first and leaves bitterness later. This is the style of evil, right? We'll know right away. When we respond to a voice, all right, if we respond to that voice and it leaves us restless, it doesn't give us peace, all right, it causes this frenzy in us, it causes frenzy in the people around us, and then it makes us bitter, that's never God, all right? And so when, like, when we hear those voices and we respond, and then all of a sudden we feel bitter, resentful, a lack of peace, and it causes chaos all around, that's never the voice of God or an act of God. All right? The Holy Spirit works in peace. The evil one creates bitterness, resentment, and frenzy. All right? The aftertaste of an action can help us. And, and, and again, we don't reflect on this so often. We live in such an unreflective society that so often we just do things. We're impulsive. We never think about the consequences. We never think about the results. But, but an important part in discernment is that we're always reflecting after an action. We're always reflecting after our prayer. We're always reflecting after a, a dialogue and a, and a conversation with somebody. And, 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 and if, there's, there, if it's of God, there's often this peace and there's this confidence and it bears fruit and there's a consistency in it. But the evil one, what he does is he creates chaos. Okay? Number seven. All right, number seven. Am I seeking light or am I hiding? The voice of God and that of the tempter finally speak in different environments. The enemy prefers darkness, falsehood, and gossip. The Lord loves sunlight, truth, and sincere transparency. Okay, super important. All right, the evil one's voice, he wants to keep you in secret. All right, you all know that. There's those things where you're like, oh, I can't tell anybody about that. I can't bring that to the light. I got to leave that in the darkness. I can't tell anybody about that experience in my life or that thing that I've done or, or that way that I feel. Like the evil one wants us to live in secrecy and darkness and falseness and gossip and rage and all these crazy things. All right, that's the voice of the evil one. The voice of the Lord, what, he, he loves the truth. He loves transparency. Okay, you see the difference? The evil one draws us into isolation and darkness. And what does the Holy Spirit do? draws us into relationship and community and transparency and honesty. Wherever there's secrecy and there's isolation, that is not the voice of God. All right? It's not the voice of God. Last one. Am I led to trust? The enemy will say to us, close yourself up in yourself. Besides, no one understands and listens to you. Don't trust anyone. Goodness, on the contrary, invites us to open up to be clear and trusting in God and in others. Man, I think that this is like this is crucial, okay? That the enemy's voice leads us to a lack of trust. 
Man, we live in a society where we question everybody. We don't trust anyone. And see what it does? It creates rage and anger and chaos and disunity and confusion. All right? And the evil one just wants to say, don't trust, don't trust, don't trust. No, live on your own. Don't trust anyone. Everyone's going to hurt you. All right? You close up on yourself. No one understands you. All right? That's the voice of that evil one. The voice of God. All right? Invites us to open up, to be honest, to be real. All right? To be trusting, to trust the Lord. To trust others. Okay? So I hope I hope this is helpful for you. All right, I can post this. I think I think Walt just mentioned that. All right, I can post this article again. It's just eight ways in which we can discern between the voice of the evil one and the voice of the Holy Spirit. We all have that. It's a constant battle every day, and some of it's very simple, and some of it's super intense for some people. Okay, the evil one's always trying to lead us to darkness and to isolation, and the Holy Spirit is leading us to honesty and transparency. Okay, and so those eight things again. Am I free? All right. The Lord leads us to freedom. The evil one wants to lead us to slavery. All right. The evil one fools us. Second, am I being flattered? All right. The the, the evil one says you are worth nothing. The evil one attacks you and says you have no worth. But God says, I love you. He encourages you. He consoles you even in your failings. The voice of God says you are loved. Number three, am I looking forward? The evil one says you have no hope, backs you into a corner. The Holy Spirit gives you the the hope that you can look forward, that there's something in the future. God can offer that hope to you, not the world or the evil one. Four, am I in the present moment? The evil one wants us to distract us, thinking about the worst case scenario forward. We get consumed in the future, okay? Or he gets us consumed in all the hurts in the past. And then we just, that's all we can think about. We're just fixated on the, on the future and the past. But what does God do? He leads us in the present moment. He is here. I am. God is with you right now in this moment. Number five is about my ego. All right? The evil one wants us just to, to be impulsive, to think about ourselves, just do what feels right. And what does God say? No, 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 no. Do the good, not what feels right. All right? The evil one is all about your feelings and your impulses and your ego. God says, no, know the good and choose the good. Choose the good. Don't just do things that are impulsive. Number six, what aftertaste does it leave? Remember, if after you you make a decision and it leaves a lack of peace, a lack of joy, anger, resentment, bitterness, chaos, confusion, that, that is not of God. All right? The things of God bring about some sense of order, some truth, some transparency, some light. All right, it, 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 it leaves us in, in a place of peace. And that leads into number seven. Am I seeking light or am I hiding? I see this time again. When people isolate, when they, when they, when they just, they're, they're like, ah, oh, like I prefer darkness, I prefer gossip, I prefer falsehood. That's that evil voice. The Lord says, I want transparency. Even in your brokenness, I want honesty. And the Lord invites us to that. And then lastly, <coughs> am I led to trust? All right, God calls us to trust. All right, not to distrust. Even if we've been hurt. I've been hurt so many times by people. All right, believe me, I have. And I know many of you out there have been hurt. And you're wounded. We have to trust the Lord. And it's hard when we're wounded. We even have to trust others. I mean, it's, it's painful, but when we lack trust, we're in a world of hurt. It creates chaos. All right, and so pay attention to those voices. Be real about that. I'm convinced that that, that the next level for us to grow in our spiritual life is that we're able to discern those voices of the evil one and the voices of the Holy Spirit. And the more we can respond with a generous yes to the voice of the Holy Spirit, man, it's incredible. It doesn't matter if we have COVID. It doesn't matter if we have family issues. It doesn't matter if we have addictions and struggles and pain and hurt and wound, whether we're rich or we're poor, whether we're smart, whether we're not so smart, whether we're a priest, whether we're divorced, whether we're... Five years old, whether we're 105 years old, all right? We all have this reality of the tempter trying to like lead us to a a dark place and the Holy Spirit leading us to life, all right? If you are living with absolute restlessness, all right, I invite you to hear the voice of God today, to respond with a generous yes. I'm praying for you, all right? Pray for me, 
All right? And stay above that voice of the evil one. And listen to the voice of the Lord. God loves you so much. He calls you his beloved son or daughter. Rest on his most sacred heart. His heart that loves you. His heart that's going to challenge you. But his heart that's going to satisfy you. Unite your heart with him today. I'm praying for you. Have a blessed day. May Almighty God bless each and every one of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.